Now, decision mistakes, okay? You know what the three priorities are. The three priorities are outcome, money, and time. What are the biggest mistakes that decision makers make? All right. Well, the first mistake they make is they don't have any priority sequencing. What does that mean? That means that they're not focusing on, okay, does this project I'm working on, is the top priority money or is the top priority time or is the top priority the outcome? I'll give you an example. My, um, my colleague Simon from Australia, he was on a, a Y2K project and the money was $500,000 to be Y2K um, uh, set up properly. If you remember at, at the turn of the 21st century, um, Y2K was a really big deal and computers um, were going to cause a lot of chaos you know, throughout the world and so we had to be, um, I don't know what the, the actual word of it, uh, the word is called, but you had to be Y2, Y2K ready, okay, from a marketing perspective, Y2K ready. And the outcome was to be 100% Y2K ready. The, the money was half a million dollars in the scenario he had and the time was to do that by December 31st, 1999, right? So if you were to ask a client who's going through that process, what's the single most important priority for you? And let's say they say, well, it's to be Y2K ready and we have to be on target and it's got to be 100% ready. You say, great. So that means to be Y2K ready, we can get it ready after the 31st of December, okay, if it's just going to be Y2K all in, and it can cost $700,000, right? Not your $500,000 budget. Okay, and the client comes back and says, no way, can't do that. Okay, so let's look at another priority. Um, is money your number one priority? It, can we go over budget at all or do we have to stick to the budget? And so they say, nope, money is the number one priority. Great. What's your second? What's your middle priority? It's um, to be um, Y2K ready. And what's the third? Which That's the outcome, right? Y2K ready means the outcome. What's the third thing? Well, um, that's to be on time. Great. So if being on time is your third priority, then we can spend half a million dollars on this project. Um, be Y2K ready, but it can be ready um, on January 6th, right? And they say, nope. They go, what do you mean, no? That's what you just told me. Those are your priorities. See what I'm saying? So when you look at those three priorities, the biggest mistake that people make is they don't prioritize their sequencing. So if money was number one priority and being Y2K ready was number two priority, completely ready, and the time, the deadline was your third priority, then if you had everything in place and to being Y2K compliant, right? That's the word I've been looking for, compliance. And it costs you half a million bucks. It comes to me over time, right? <laughs> and then um, you were ready like on the 3rd of January. That would be okay because your third priority, your bottom priority was time. Your middle priority was outcome. Your top priority was budget or money. Okay, is this making sense? So if you don't have a priority sequencing process in your decision making, then you got a problem because you're not going to make good decisions. This making sense. If you have a big takeaway, please share that with me. Wherever you're watching this, down below or whatever you're writing on, share your biggest takeaway so far. Now, what's the number two mistake? No decided deadline. There's no time deadline. So it, typically I find I do this all the time with my own team. I know who's going to do it. I know what's going to get done. And I never ask the damn question when. Now, why is, is that a, a pet peeve of mine? Well, I make the mistake. I never say when. And so you have to have a when time. My friend Lisa Nichols doesn't like deadlines. She likes the when time. She was in the movie The Secret. You may know her. So you have to make a decision on when. Now, you can renegotiate the time. You can unmake the time. Or you can keep the time. That's called an agreement. But no decided deadline is another big mistake people make. Next, no progress with milestones. Now, when you have a milestone, that means certain things are getting done. So our JV page for our push button influence has a date, and that's a big milestone. Our, um, for Steve Olsher and I, my partner, 
our swipe file for our affiliates have to get done before the launch. That's a milestone. Are you with me? So milestones are big events that have deadlines and if you don't have big events, and you should have somewhere between five to nine big events in a major decision or a project, then a progress milestone is a big thing in your decision making and it's important to have that. No assigned driver. Ooh, this drives me crazy. When I ask someone to drive a project, that means I don't have to get involved. I'm the sponsor, I may be funding it, but the driver is driving. So imagine in a car rally, someone has the map and someone is driving. Who has the accelerator? The driver. Who has the steering wheel? The driver. Who has the stick shift? The driver. Who has the map? The passenger, right? So if I'm going to be the passenger in the car rally saying, turn left, turn right, in 100 meters we're going to take a sharp you know, hook or a hairpin turn, I'm not driving. The person in the trenches is the driver. I am the one who is giving instructions, but I'm not the one making sure everyone's doing their job. So if you don't assign a driver, and that driver may be you, it may not be you, but um, the driver, I want to be crystal clear, the driver does not have the map. The driver has the steering wheel. The driver does not have the map. In fact, if the driver has the map, the driver crashes. Okay. So if you drive with a map, you got a big problem. Um, and number, f number five, no weekly progress huddles. Now, a progress huddle means a little huddle that people get together. Now, I have a huddle with my team twice a week. And what's the reason for that? Well, I don't believe in perfection. I think perfection um, is not possible with many, many projects. I believe that certain things are perfect the way they are and results are perfect the way they are. But I believe in progress, not perfection. I think the perfection is looking at the progress and you got to have a weekly huddle or a gathering to see how the progress is going with the set decisions that you've made with the team. Now, if you don't have a team, you have to at least have some critical thinking time for yourself and look at the progress that you're achieving. Now, decisive means progress, not perfection. To cut off options doesn't mean that those options are cut off forever. Some people cut off options and say, wait a minute, that's, this didn't work. Let's go back and go back to some more options. The fact that I tried it, it didn't work, I can go back. And that's what decisive means. That's called failing forward. You make mistakes and then you go back to other options and through a process of elimination, you know what not to do. Progress is often preceded by chaos. What does that mean? Well, that's just a natural law. Chaos is what's in, in, the, in the world of physics is what created our oceans. Chaos is what created mountains. Chaos is what created the universe and clouds and uh, our atmosphere. Chaos theory is what creates beauty, right? You are the result of chaos. You don't, you don't have to have a spiritual practice to believe that or not. It's true if you look at universal law. And I believe that progress, this is my belief, you can, you can not believe me, but uh, progress is often preceded by chaos. So if there's a lot of chaos happening, that's why you want a decision-making strategy. That's why you want a structure and a sequence to your decisions. That's why you want priorities. That's why you want an outcome. That's why you want money and time in your decision triangle with P in the middle, which is priorities. Now, what is a super cool way to make world-class decisions? Well, there was a mathematician, and um, he's assigned this Cartesian quadrant decision model. Now, I use it for decision making, but there are mathematical approaches to the Cartesian quadrants. If you haven't looked up Cartesian quadrant, you can look it up on Google and learn a lot about it. But here's the way, if it's a really big decision, now this could be marriage, divorce, having children, um, it could be a big business decision, it could be a civic decision, putting up a monument or a building, it could be buying a house, it could be paying taxes, Anything super, super big, I recommend that you do this. What I do is I put the decision on a table. And my good friend Bob Proctor taught me this. I put it on a table, and it has four sides. It's never a circular table. It's a four-sided table. I hope that what I'm teaching you here is not only new and fresh, but it's useful. Because that's what I like to teach. Practical, applicable, useful, uh, repeatable, duplicable. Du not duplicatable, that's not a word duplicable. If you're a network marketer, you know that. I'm talking about duplicable, duplicable practices, okay? It's a mouthful. What I do is I, I have a table. It has four sides, and I put the decision in the middle, and 
I look at the decision from four different angles. And here are the questions I ask myself with that decision. Number one, what will happen if I say yes to the decision? What will happen if I say yes to the decision? Okay? And I look at it and I give all the possibilities of what you know will happen if I say yes, right? Moving ahead with this, right? So what will happen if I said yes to having a partnership in my upcoming launch with Steve Olsher called Push Button Influence? And I have a list of questions. That was a very big decision I made, right? And that's a big decision he made. Here's the here's the second question. Now, same decision. So let's say the decision on the table is push button influence, right? And let's say it's the, the decision is whether to partner with someone or go solo, right? So I looked at it from one angle. It says partnership, push button influence. That's a decision I've already made, and it was yes, and that was the best decision I've made, right? Well, why? Because I went through the process. So here's the model, the Cartesian models. I'm looking at uh, from one side of the table. What will happen if I say yes? And I write some notes. You can put it on... Uh, index cards like this or you can put it on sheets of paper then I turn and I go to the next angle the next side of the table and I'm still looking at the decision the damn things on the table right and I'm looking at it from that angle I'm changing my physiology are you with me and then the second question is what won't happen if I do what won't happen if I do say yes to the decision what won't happen if I do say yes well what won't happen if I say yes to a partnership is I won't get a hundred percent of the proceeds that won't happen what will happen is I get to do half of the work I get to pay half of the bill right um, I may make twice the revenue but what won't happen I won't get all the revenue and there's other things as well right so I look at it from that angle what won't happen if the decision is yes then again I change my position my physiology I look at the same uh, uh, decision. The decision in this case is partnering with someone for a launch. In this case, push button influence. The partner is Steve Olsher. He named the course, by the way. It was called something else before. And the answer was yes, because I went through this process on my own. And the third question is, what will happen if the decision is no? Well, what will happen if I if I don't do it is, well, um, if the decision is no, then I won't be able to give the work to other people. I won't be able to call in on my partner's resources and joint venture partners. I won't, in other words, to utilize those. And he or she won't be able to do that with me. I won't be uh, able to cut half the expenses, right, by someone else paying for it. So I look at those answers, and they're different answers many times, and I put it on, for me, I put it on an index card. And then the final angle is what won't happen. What will not happen, in others, what won't happen if the decision is no. What will not happen if the decision is no? Which is another way of saying what, um, well, that's, it's confusing to some people, but what will not happen if the decision is no? Think about that. You've looked at the question from four different angles, and they have different answers. Some are similar, but what will happen if the decision is yes? What won't happen if the decision is yes? I change my physiology. Um, what will happen if it's a no decision? And what won't happen if it's a no decision? Now, here's what I know to be true. We learn as human beings, we learn best often in a state of discomfort. Every decision is uncomfortable because you're giving up a piece of your freedom. Every time you spend money, there's discomfort because you're giving up a piece of your freedom. If you live in a money economy, which most of you do. In fact, I think all of you do. Now, some of you may barter, but we all live in a money system, right? So we learn best when we're in a state of discomfort, and yet that's what we don't like. Think about the greatest lessons you've ever had is when you were the most uncomfortable, when you had a high level of discomfort, and yet some people avoid the discomfort, even though it leads to a great decision. I call this, it's not an oxymoron, it's called noble discomfort, noble discomfort discomfort. That, my friend, is all about world-class decision-making. I hope our paths cross often. I hope you've decided to continue to learn and listen to me, and I hope to learn from you as well. My name is Alex Mondosian. All good wishes.